Hallelujah. I am just going to walk and talk as the Lord talks to me today. And there's, it came to me, actually, this little title, this little thought came to me a few days ago, but I had no intention of even, uh, of even um, visiting that this morning. But this morning, as I was praying, about six o'clock in the morning, then I began to hear the voice of the Lord and began to tell me something that I, Lord, I, I don't really want to go down this road. But you know what's best and you know every person here. <clears throat> but this title came to me, this thought, this, this um, few words, that there is a bait of Satan. Satan has set a bait on his hook. I mess up the uh, live stream everywhere I go. So just... <laughs> um, Satan is fishing for your soul. And sometimes, ma matter of fact, I'll just say, every church, every body, every set of people, at some point, the enemy gets his hook, sets his bait, and hooks somebody. And that somebody will begin to be Satan's bait. And the enemy <clears throat> will use this bait to fish for everybody else in the body of Christ. I told you it might be uncomfortable for a few minutes. We'll get past it if you go with me. But this <laughs> is the end times. This is the end of the game. I, I, I am trying not to use this as an illustration right now, but maybe I just have to. There's been a few games happening in the last few days. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And as it gets close to the end of the game, as it gets close to the end of the season, then he, you can tell that there is a fight to the finish. It's ramped up. People will do whatever it takes. They will fight dirty. They will do whatever it takes to scramble to get to the finish line, to win, uh, to win the season, to win the end game because they know if I don't win right now, then it's finished. It's over. And I want to tell you today that we are in a fight to the finish right now. And I, I know that it is, um, it's just our human flesh that will tell us just to kind of flow through. Just to kind of lay back and relax and just we're going to be okay, and everything's going to be all right. Just relax. But don't you understand today, if you watched any of these games, that if you let your guard down for one moment, if you get too tired and just a little bit lazy, then you're going to give place to the enemy. And the Bible tells us, neither in Ephesians 4, chapter 27, or verse 27, neither give place to to the devil. And I know today that there's many of us who are given place to the devil, giving them an, him an opportunity to get a, to sneak in just a little bit and just to get a little bit of headway. But it's not time, church, to let our guard down. We are at almost the end of this, and God is going to have a mighty church 
when he takes us out. It's not going to be a limping church, a, a falling apart church. I don't believe that for a minute. There's revival coming, and I want to be right in the middle of revival. And in order to win, we cannot let our guard down. We cannot give the enemy an opportunity to score a goal on us. But in these last days, we see it everywhere. Satan has gone fishing. You know the Bible tells us that we are. Uh, Jesus came along and he said, uh, "He said I'm going to make you fishers of men." Do you understand today that everybody that Jesus calls, everybody that Jesus allows to be in the church, that repents, that is baptized in Jesus' name, and he fills with his spirit, is called to be a fisher of men. But what is happening in this day and age is many people who are supposed to be a fisherman is being used for Satan's bait. And I know that they don't even know it sometimes. And I, I pray that God will help me to explain what I'm saying. But the enemy cannot walk through the back doors and just begin to throw us a party and we'll just, okay, devil, we're just going to follow you. No, the enemy has to sneak in. The enemy has to come in a sly way. And he sets his bait. And if he can find somebody that is not all doing all that they should do, then he will get a hook in them. And he will begin to use them to tear down everybody else. To throw a line out there. I want to read a little bit in um, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter, I marked it here somewhere. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. For at the window of my house I looked through the casement, and I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house. And in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, and her feet abide not in her own house. Now is she without, and now in the streets, and she lieth in wait in every corner. So she caught him. She set the bait and she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent, impudent face said unto him, and I'm not going to read, but I'm going to catch it back up in verse 21. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, <clears throat> she forced him. Excuse me. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, and as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not what is for his life. And God was talking to me this morning. And I was, and the enemy can be so subtle and can paint such a beautiful picture and can draw people away that he lieth in wait and catches somebody. But I, I just need to go here today. I need to go here. That he, when he catches somebody, that he will begin to use them to cause division in the church. He will begin to use them to 
to pull other people to them. To them, he uses people as bait. I don't know about you, but I hope that you can pray with me this morning and ask God to help you every day to not be the bait of Satan, to be the one that draws other people away from the house of God, that tries to pull people out of where they need to be, that tries to bring them to their side, because that is what the devil's work is in these last days, to bring people out of the safety of the house of God. I don't want to be the bait that Satan sets for somebody else. I have watched it. I've been in church for so many years, and I have watched as somebody got the enemy got a hold of them with a bitter spirit or got a hold of them with jealousy, or got a hold of them with some kind of hatred, and it's not too long. They're sitting there with a bitter look on their face, and, and they're, be, get, they're beginning to hate uh, everything about the pastor and the church, and it's not too long before they go along to some other brother or sister and say, do you understand what they're doing? We need to go here. We need, we need to do this. And you have become the bait of Satan. Told you I didn't want to preach this. You become the bait of Satan. But I'm not here this morning to preach some kind of negative and bring us all down message this morning. I believe that God is just reaching for somebody that's on the precipice of being the bait of Satan. He just wants to pull you back where you belong and say, don't be his bait, be my bait. We're supposed to be fishers of men. Draw them to this house. Draw them to God himself. We are not supposed to be trying if there's something in our spirit today that is trying to pull us away from the pastor, pull us away from the church. Then we get to realize and understand and recognize the devil for what he's doing. We are not ignorant of his devices, but somehow, sometimes, we become ignorant of his devices because we think we know what's right. So we don't think we're being bait. We think we're doing the right thing. My God, I wish I didn't have to preach this today. But here we are this morning, and I don't want anybody to misunderstand me, but I don't want anybody... To become the person. Maybe this comes from, maybe I'm able to preach this today because I come from, grew up in a place where there was a big church split. <laughs> I don't know why I'm preaching this right now, but I'm, I'm going to get past it, okay? We're going to get past it. I maybe I need to warn somebody this morning. You better... I wish I could remember where it was. It just come to me right now. I don't like any. I don't like other translations of the Bible. I just don't like them. I, I think this is perfect. <laughs> you can read whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. But I come across this translation of a scripture. I think it's an NLT or something, and it says, "It says something about you know, you're not wise if you keep talking. So shut your mouth." <laughs> That's, that's the exact word, shut your mouth. And I said, I like that. <laughs> I, I, I really like that scripture. Because when people get talking too much, then they can start heading down the wrong road and become the, the bait that's on the end of the hook when the devil's trying everything he can do. Who can I get? Who can I get here to stir up strife and trouble? Who can I get here to cause division? Who can I, who can I get to discourage the pastor and discourage the, the church? Who can, who can I hook on my, hook, hook on my line here? And he will use anything. And he will use live bait. Let me warn somebody that even live bait, once you catch what you're looking for, you get swallowed up in it and you're not live for very long. 
we got to be careful this morning. I don't know, maybe this is a warning for months down the road. I don't have, I have any idea. I, 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 this is not my church. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me to say. And I know I'm preaching different than I usually do preach. But I feel like I have to warn somebody. <clears throat> so there's the bait of Satan. And then the Lord continued to talk to me about this. A few weeks ago, I was preaching somewhere else and the Lord gave me this thought, this um, remembering something and, and I brought it out in the message and while I was praying, I felt like I need to bring it out here. Does anybody know anybody that's gotten an a, a, a organ transplant? No? So when you get a transplanted organ from somebody else, another body. And I know a few people personally that have had this. You have, for the rest of your life, you have to take anti-rejection medication. Are there any doctors in the house? You have to take anti-rejection medication. If you stop taking it, then your body will, and it might reject it even with it, but your body will begin to reject that organ because it does not belong there. It's a foreign object. It's something that shouldn't be there. So in order to try to stop that from happening, they've come up with this anti-rejection medication. In the church, in the body of Christ, in your spiritual body, it is supposed to reject things that are not right for it, does not belong there. And I know I'm twisting it a bit when I get this out, but your body... God designed it. And if something is comes into it that shouldn't be there, it's, it's not part of the body. It's some come from somebody else or somewhere else. Then your body is designed to reject that. And when, in order to offset that, you have to take something to try to fight against that, and you'll do it all the rest of your life. But I'm here to tell you today that there are some things that are trying to get inside of us that do not belong there. I could talk about physical things. I, I could talk about cancers and, and physical, actual uh, things that try to attack our body that do not belong there. And, and But I'm talking about a spiritual thing. And there are spiritual tumors and spiritual cancers that try to get into our body and try to get into our spirit today. And there's, try, there's things that try to infiltrate the church. And the body needs to, un, to realize and, and try to reject that. But the enemy will try to come in right, and, and give us an anti-rejection so that we will keep it. But there's something down inside of us called the Holy Ghost that ought to recognize this cancer does not belong here. There's something down on the inside. If it's physical today, I want to tell you that we can command these things to get out of our body. And I'm here in the church of the living God today. And I know I'm mentioning the bait of Satan, but he's put some bait in the church to try to take us out. And I want to I want to tell you today that we need to reject it. Right. Come on. The body of Christ needs to reject jealousy. The body of Christ needs to reject any kind of 
spiritual cancers that would come in. The body of Christ needs to, real, to, to recognize and reject anything that does not belong there. I hope I'm here. I hope you're hearing me today. I hope you understand what I'm saying. The devil is going to try to take us out. But we have uh, the Holy Ghost today to, uh, to help us to understand this don't belong here. That don't belong here. I don't want this in me. And we can reject it by our spoken word. Thank you, Jesus. We can reject it by our spoken word. I'm not going to take any anti-rejection medication from the enemy. You know, you know what I'm saying? He comes in and says, well, that's okay. It's all right. What you're doing is okay. It's not, it, it's, it's not going to take you to hell. It's not going to kill your soul. That's an anti-rejection serum or whatever you want to call it from the enemy. But when something comes into the body, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to say it the right way. I don't know how to say it the right way. When something comes into the body, that is detrimental to it. It's, it's not good for it. Then the body is set up by God to reject it, the spiritual body. It tries to heal itself. It tries to, to um, push that out, kill those cells, get it out of here. So I'm telling you today, when the enemy comes and tries to do some stuff to us and say stuff to us, we need to reject it. You say, well, I can reject it all I want. Uh, let, me, let me tell you what the Bible says. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Luke chapter, one, chapter 4, verse 1 through 14 tells us the story of how Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. You know the story. How he was tempted by the devil for after 40 days of fasting. He was tempted in all ways. And, and <clears throat> the Bible says that he went into the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost. You've heard this before. He went in full of the Spirit. And when he come out, he come out in the power of the Spirit. He come out in the power of the Holy Ghost. What did he do? He resisted. He would not let the lies in. He would not listen to the voice of the enemy. He rejected what the enemy was trying to say and do. And I'm telling you, there's more power in that than what we recognize and realize. I could tell you some more scriptures this morning about that. But there's more power in just simply rejecting what the enemy is trying to push in and put into us. Don't listen to any gossip. Don't listen to anything that would try to take you away from the house of the Lord and, and discourage you from being in the church. Don't listen to the bait of Satan. I will not bite on that. I will not accept the bait of Satan. I will not be taken by the bait of Satan. Somebody, I hope today when you leave here, will recognize when the devil comes to you on Monday morning and tries to tell you some lies and tries to get you out, recognize that's just a bait. I'm not falling for it. I'm not stepping into the trap. I will not be tricked by the devil. I will not. I'm going to reject the, this cancer that is trying to come into my body. It doesn't belong. It's a foreign substance. It shouldn't be there. Man, this is a hard one, brother. And the Lord told me this morning to give you a few words to there's power in your tongue. I believe this with all my heart. I believe that we need to not just Sit there silent while things happen, and doctor comes and says you're going to die in ten days. You got cancer. You got this. You got something. And we said, oh, oh, okay. 
I think there's something that needs to rise up in us and say, uh-uh, I declare healing. I believe for healing. I, I, I don't believe that word. I'm, I'm going to reject it. We need to reject the things that the enemy would bring to us. When the enemy says, well, the church is falling apart, you need to say, no, the church is rising up. No, I, no that's not happening. I will not listen to the voice of the enemy. Everything's wrong. Oh, that's because we're in a fight, but it's going to be all good. It's going to be right. I, you need to speak faith, and you need to speak positively about these things. There's power in the tongue. But the Lord told me to tell you this morning, before I'm done, that there is going to be some things that come at us and try to infiltrate us personally and the church body, of course. It's going to try, but you need to stand up every time. I hope somebody will hear me. Simple word this morning. But you need to tell the devil that your access has been denied. I just believe this morning when you stand up, and you reject what the enemy's trying to, to say and do and tell them, no, access denied. I believe that there's a God a much bigger than us. We say it this morning. He's bigger than all my troubles. He's bigger than all my fears. He's bigger than all the mountains. He's bigger than anything that comes against me. And we need to stand up and say, no devil, access denied. Some brother comes to you and saying, hey, we need to leave there here. I don't like how pastor says this and does that. I don't know why I'm saying this. And all this stuff. You need just need to say, no access denied i will not listen to the lies of the enemy i will not take the bait i won't bite on that yes. Amen. access denied access denied this morning i won't listen to what the enemy has to say first peter chapter 5 and Verse 6 through 8 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, before the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He is laying in wait this morning trying to catch us, trying like the woman that we read about, trying to catch the prey, trying to catch somebody when they're off guard, trying to catch somebody when they're not feeling totally up to, up to par. He's trying his hardest to catch us when we're down. Whom resist? <laughs> it's such a simple thing that we... You know, we try to, sometimes we overcomplicate things. We say, well, I've got the adversary coming at me, and so I need to come up with a 12-step program to try to fight the enemy, and i got to come up with all these things, and i I got to get the pastor, i got to get sister so-and-so, i got to get all these people, i got to call the evangelist who's been here 20 years ago. i gotta, I got to get this all together because the adversary is trying to devour me. The Bible just says, resist. <laughs> resist. Resist. Reject this thing from getting to us and getting into us. I used to fight... Lord, help me today. Help me tonight. Help me tomorrow morning because of what I'm going to say. <laughs> I used to fight and deal all the time with depression. <clears throat> I used to that used to come at me. Things were going right, and sometimes things were going right. Just this dark shadow, this overwhelming cloud of darkness and, and despair and just, can't see past the clouds, so there's no future, there's nothing. Would come over me. And I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, you pray and do whatever, but you, you just don't know until, until at some point you get a revelation of all I need to do is like Jesus did. Resist. 
I will not allow this. And I and every once in a while, that dark cloud comes around. I can feel it. I can see it. <clears throat> I know what it's all about. But I will not allow. And I think there's po more power within us than what we think sometimes. I will not allow the devil to take me down that road again. Because it does not belong in here. I am a Holy Ghost filled, apostolic, one God, tongue talking person. And the depression and the oppression of the enemy has no place. And I will not give him any place in my life. I will not allow him to take me down that road. De Denied access. Your access to my life is denied. I will not allow immorality. I will not allow depression. I will not, because somebody, I'm preaching for you this morning. Somebody has to say the same things to, tomorrow morning. I will not allow this to get to me. I will not allow this to touch me. I resist this steadfastly. I reject it. I reject it. Speak to it. I'll lay down and let the devil roll over you like a bulldozer. Stand up and say, no, nope, not today, Satan. Not today. And you know what? Tomorrow's not looking so good for you either. And I got some things booked up next month, so I don't got no time for you then either. I deny your access. You can shout, you can talk, you can do all you want, but I don't even hear you because you're denied access into my brain, and into my mind, into my heart. I will not allow you. Told you. Bait of Satan. I'm not biting it. Somebody needs to tell. Somebody, I, I know some of you are shy this morning. I used to sit in the corner of the church and back of the church and, and, and I'd sit there with my head down and if there was anybody, it, if there was time that people were standing and praying, you know, I, I'd just put my head down behind the seat and, and I was so shy and backward, but I was also thinking that, you know, I, I don't want to do this and I don't want to serve the Lord. And, but I, I'd be very honest with you. Something way down inside of me that want it when everybody else was jumping and shouting and feeling the presence of God and talking in tongues I'm sitting there hard I'm sitting there you know in my seat and, and all that and, and, and I want something down inside of me want it oh if I could just do that if I could just feel that freedom I'm going to go down some bad rabbit holes here this morning I'm off my notes I've been off my notes since I started. <laughs> um, we were singing. I was say, we were singing this morning. I was thinking about it. I just come across something not too long <clears throat> ago. I don't know what anything I share here this morning. I'm doing it as the Lord brings it to me. And most of you might sit here and say, "Well, who's he talking to? What's what, you know? What's he talking about?" But because the Lord's bringing it to me, I know there's one person sitting there, and you need to hear it. I come across, I didn't even know, I had no idea. My, it would be my wife's great, great, if that's such a thing, grandfather. Her father's grandfather was a <clears throat> preacher. He couldn't read, couldn't write, but he was a powerful preacher. I, I found some stuff out. And he was in one place, and they had revival, and then probably only Brother Ragich here would know where I'm talking about, but this was so many years ago. Mars Hill, Maine. He felt the call to go to Mars Hill, Maine, and start a church, and he went. And within a short time, he purchased an old jailhouse, bought a jailhouse, and began to have services in it. Within no time at all, this was, uh, this was written up about him, I think in his obituary or something. Within no time, <clears throat> people were traveling for hours around, horse, buggy, whatever it was back then, <laughs> those cars. And... <clears throat> They was coming 
and filled up this jailhouse. The reports were that there was doctors and lawyers sitting on the roof of the jailhouse trying to hear the word of God spoken by a man that had no education. And revival, mighty revival, broke out in a jailhouse. God just does some things, you know. Here is the jailhouse with all the prison bars in it that kept people chained and prisoned. And he brings a preacher in and starts preaching in the jailhouse. And there's people being, the chains are being broken. The prison doors are being opened in their spirits. I think God just does something maybe for a sense of humor once in a while. But I'm here to tell you today that God's still doing that work today. God's not done with that. But if we take the bait of Satan, then we will not be involved in that. I don't know where I was going with that. But I, but I felt like I had to tell somebody, God is still breaking chains today. God is still opening prison doors today. God is still in the business of bringing things out of nothing. This man came into a little town and began to just talk and preach the gospel and teach Bible studies. And in no time at all, there was an explosion of things that were happening until people were climbing up on the roof of a, of a jailhouse building just to try to hear the word of God that would deliver them and set them free. And I'm here today to tell you that that's what's going to happen in these days coming. There is a there is a strong pull of God today. You say, well, the all hell is broken loose in the world, and I recognize that. But there's also... Where the... What's the scripture? Where sin abounds, doth grace much more abound. And I believe today when we see that the enemy is working overtime and trying to destroy and trying to work against the church, then I'm just sitting back. I didn't used to think this way, but I, I have thought this way in the last 10, 20 years. When God, when the enemy begins to fight, I'm looking up for my redemption draws nigh. I'm looking through the hills for what's come with my help. When the enemy really fighting and really trying to take us down and trying to, to trying to cause division and make a mess, then I, I just get an excitement in my spirit because if the enemy's against me, then I know my God is for me and I know he's going to come through and he will not allow the devil to win. But we need to make sure that we are on the right side of this. We need to make sure we're on the side where we haven't taken the bait. I want to say it this way, drank the Kool-Aid. We haven't been tricked. We haven't been snared. We haven't been trapped. I don't know about you today, but I want to make sure when the trumpet sounds that I don't hear about it on the news. I want to make sure when the Lord comes I'm looking down, not up. If you understand what I'm saying. Don't take the bait. Shut it down. My, I just feel like going so many rabbit holes. I have to, I guess. Jesus. Jesus. Let's stand here today. Hallelujah. Don't take the anti rejection medication. That thing doesn't belong in you. Don't listen to the naysayers, the gossipers, those that would try to tear down. Don't listen. Don't take the bait. Satan has said his bait. Don't take it. You are supposed to be a fisher of men. When we leave this place today, we come back next Sunday, we need to come in here as a fisher of men. Not with a sour look on our face and, and a bitterness in our spirit because that bait is bitter. That bait is sour. That bait is poison. You can tell sometimes when you walk into the place uh, they, they've taken the bait. They're not happy. They're not, they're, they're discontent. There's a mess in their life. 
And there's a spirit inside of them that looks around. Who else can I take with me? I need a friend. I need somebody I can tell about this and somebody I can take down with me. I've just come to warn somebody and I, I, I tell you I did not want to preach this because I'm just a visiting minister, but reject the bait this morning. I want to open the altar today. We need to pray for ourselves today. We need to pray that we recognize the bait. We need to pray that we recognize the devices of the enemy. And we need to pray that we are able every morning and every day to reject and to deny access to the enemy. I know sometimes it might be easier than said and done, but we need to deny him access. Let's come this morning. I open this altar. If you would come, if you think that you can make it on your own, beware. <laughs> beware. If you think you're standing, lest you fall. We all need God this morning. I need God this morning. Amen.